what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're talking about screen five again here today it looks like the alberta film rating system has put up a listing for the second trailer for screen five which should be coming out i would assume around closer to the end of the year november december sometime most likely december i would bet just to get us hyped up one last time before the movie releases the following month in january on the 14th and it looks like it's only a second less than the trailer we've already gotten what this trailer could show i'm going to imagine it'll just be a lot of reworks of things we've already seen while mixing in some newer things like maybe we see different sequences of the the vince scene where ghostface is behind vince maybe we'll actually get a confirmation of what vince's last name is since i know that's something that a lot of people are curious about certain things that are not being stated about certain characters i would imagine that what they're going to do though is not disclose them in the trailer they'll save that they'll have you speculating from the trailers and then get your answers completely for some of those things once you sit down and watch the actual movie so like the trailer that we've already gotten has shown us glimpses of Tara Carpenter dying in the opening which again I believe is a misdirect we've seen glimpses of Kyle Gallner's character again Vince looking like he's getting killed but you know there's also the wording being used throughout there's been attacks not murders or kills just attacks however that in and of itself could also be misleading since maybe they could just be using that because you don't have to describe them as murders or or deaths <laughs> You can you can describe them as attacks if you if for some reason you don't want to be that gruesome with your description you can just knock it all up to there's been three attacks so far when in reality those attacks have been a lot more than just attacks involved they've been attacks that resulted in death maybe that's a misleading thing that word attacks but a lot of, I've seen a lot of people speculating that there's nobody's getting killed it's just people getting attacked so far uh, a lot of us believe this is of course to draw Sam back to town since this initial synopsis that came out was. A young woman returns to her hometown to investigate a series of vicious murders or vicious crimes. That young woman seems to be the character of Sam. We know that Sidney Prescott will end up getting involved at some point. She'll be there right along the way, like we've already talked about and been believing since the very beginning, that she will be like a mentor of sorts to Sam, potentially Tara as well, since Tara we know is Sam's younger sister. The narrative, though, seems to be, judging from the trailer, it seems like this narrative is for some, some reason, it feels like it's about Sam. It feels like it's about Sam. Just the way certain things are being showcased in the trailer and how she seems to be kind of paralleling in ways Sydney Prescott. Just being honest. She's she's paralleling that character way more than Tara Carpenter is so far. She has a troubled past. She has a boyfriend who might potentially be a killer. <laughs> uh she left town, not that Sydney, she left town as soon as she as soon as she can, which is something I I bet Sydney wishes she could have done. So you know. Sam has Sidney Prescott written all over her. Melissa Barrera, I, I would imagine, is going to knock it out of the park. I've seen a lot of her other recent works, especially recently in The Heights. She was amazing there. I've seen Vita, I believe the, the show is titled. Uh, she was amazing there. So I can't wait to see how she brings this final girl, Sam Carpenter, to life when we get to see it. Some other things we could see in the trailer could just be more little breadcrumbs about the killer's killing patterns this time around. Since so far we know that they are attacking relatives of the original killer's. That does lead me to believe, though, I wonder if, in fact, we could be told that the Loomis, not, well, we know Mrs. Loomis is dead, of course. <laughs> Maybe we'll get told that Hank Loomis was killed. Maybe we'll find out that the mockers were killed. I think that would be a little gruesome. Uh, not only are the relatives of the OG killers getting killed, but they've, uh, they've actually taken out their parents. I think that would be a very sick thing to do and find out. Not to say that they would have a scene, but maybe that'll just be something we learn along the way as this, as the narrative progresses. Uh, maybe we'll learn some different things about some other initiatives for this killer. Maybe there's some type of large online fan base for the Woodsboro killings or something to that effect that we'll, we'll find out from the trailer. I, I feel like there's just so much that they are trying to not have shared in these trailers that I, I get what they're saying when they say, you know, it's hard to put these together because you want to have a movie that while it is coherent, at the same time, while it's coherent, you want to save as many surprises as you can. I've also seen a lot of people thinking that they're doing damage control because of the leaks that have come out, etc. So like, regardless again of the leaks, if you believe them or not to be true or which version of them are true or not because i think there's like 
maybe four or three different types of leaks that have come out. Whether you believe them to be true or not, again, I have always stated this. I'll say it again. You need to see how it's come, how it comes off on screen. Anything reading it can sound good or bad from just reading it, depending on how you have it playing out in your head, because you're the one creating your imagination. We have to see what their vision was with this stuff and how it comes off on screen with the actors and all the other components that go into making a quality film. The other thing I wanted to talk about was Randy Meeks, the original Randy Meeks audio for Scream 3, his videotape audio that has been released online or has surfaced online by courtesy of viewer non who shared a link to I believe it's Mediafire. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you feel the need to download it at all. But basically, I listen to it and it's just like recapping some of the stuff we already know. There are some new tidbits in there, references to the movie Aliens, I think also The Thing. And then there's a reference to Randy saying he bets it's Mickey for who if if you're watching this video, of course, it means he did not survive this Windsor College murders. But he actually makes a comment that his bet is on Mickey, and then he related to a a paper he he wrote one time about Superman two versus Spy Superman two versus the original Superman. There's another moment in the clip where he's talking about again the virginity of Karen Kolchek and just going off on his roommate who's trying to come in the room. There's some there's some new things in there that I think a lot of you will kind of just be like, oh wow, that's cool. I'm glad this surfaced online. And at one point, he does kind of go over the same rules apply. Don't drink, don't do drugs, don't have sex, uh, don't smoke. It's bad for you. I think he says something like that. You know, the character of Randy, he also does make this this comment, poking fun at Kevin Williamson. Of course, just a slight little friendly nod, I would say, friendly jab, saying that, hey, whose bright idea was to kill off the voice of the audience? Because that that's what Randy was, ultimately. He was the voice of the audience. And that is honestly where I... His, what I like about him st starts and what I like about him also stops there. Just because him being that mouthpiece for us and him being that horror horror, uh, horror nerd that just knew all these ins and outs from what he has noticed and paid attention to. And now he wants to share with his friends at the party because they, they clearly seem to be clueless about these rules. And it's just like, you know, he's right when he's bringing this stuff. These these are the common things in these movies. So I just thought you guys would like to know that. And I'll leave a link to it down again in the description. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification in this video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. If there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.